Okay, in this video, we're going to be doing 2025 Calc BC number six. It's a full on series question. Um, let's see what they got. So, first up, the Teller series for a function f about x equals four is given by uh, the sum from one to infinity, the quantity x minus four to the n plus one over n plus one times three to the n. Then they write out a bunch of things, tells us that it converges uh, to f of x on its interval of convergence. First up, we need to use the ratio test to find the interval of convergence um, about x equals four, and we wanna justify our answer. So uh, let's see. So we're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus first term. So every n that you see, replace it with n plus one, which is why we end up with x minus four to the n plus two, n plus two, and then three to the n plus one, times the reciprocal of the nth term. So that's just gonna be n plus one times three to the n over the quantity x minus four to the n plus one. Now we need to take this limit, um, so you have x minus 4 to the n plus 2 over x minus 4 to the n plus 1, which just leaves you with the absolute value of x minus 4. Then uh, the n plus 1 and the n plus 2, if you go to infinity, those just have a limit of 1, so they're not really impacting anything. We have a 3 to the n divided by 3 to the n plus 1, that leaves a 3 in the denominator. So the limit is this. Now we know that this converges absolutely within this interval. So it converges absolutely for the absolute value of x minus four over three, less than one. Um, so that means the absolute value of x minus four is less than three. So the radius is three, but we need to talk about endpoints because we're doing intervals. So you're at four and you can go three in either direction. So this gives us one is less than x is less than seven. And the way that I got that was I did four minus three and I did four plus three. So this is our interval of convert. Well, this is the um, open interval. We need to test the endpoints because we don't know if it converges or diverges there. To test the endpoints, we're gonna go back up to this summation they gave us and just replace x with first one and then with um, seven and see what happens. So if we replace with one, we get uh, negative three to the n plus one over n plus one and three to the n. So uh, negative three to the n plus one is negative three uh, to the n times negative three to the first. So in that case, we can simplify because the negative three to the first stays. Negative three to the n divided by three to the n is negative one to the n, and then over n plus one. This, I don't know how much work we really need to show here because it just says justify. My justification is I'm gonna say this converges by the alternating series test. So I'm not writing out that the terms alternate decrease in, in magnitude to zero, therefore converges by the uh, alternating series test. I think this is enough on these types of questions, but we'll see when they put out the answers for this particular year. Um, and then we have to do the same thing for seven. If X is seven, go back to that summation again. Uh, we're gonna end up with, uh, in this case, I'll just like punch it in. Uh, seven minus four is three. So you just have three to the N plus one over N plus one times three to the N. So again, you can do the thing where it's three to the N times three to the first the three to the n's cancel, and we just get three over n plus one. And again, I'm just gonna say this diverges. This basically is the harmonic series shifted, um, but I'm just gonna say it diverges by limit comparison to the harmonic series. So I'm saying what happens and I'm saying how I know it. I think that's enough for the points. Uh, there's only so many points to go around. Um, so now we need to state our interval of convergence. Converges at one, diverges at seven. So our interval of convergence is one, including one to seven, not including seven. All right, so that was a doozy. That was a lot of work. Um, let's take a look at the next one. Find the first three non-zero terms in the general term of the Taylor series for F prime, the derivative of F about X equals four. All right, this is good because this is, they're called power series, not literally for this reason, but basically because you just use the power rule on them or you reverse the power rule. Um, so in this case, F prime of X is gonna be equal to, look at that first term, and just power rule it, bring down the two, cancel those twos, you get x minus four over three. And then for our second term, uh, power rule this thing. So bring down the three, cancel the threes, you get x minus four squared over three squared. Do it for this one, bring down the four, cancel the fours, x minus four to the third over three cubed. And you can see there's really a pattern going on here. And do plus dot 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 plus, Got to do the same thing for the nth term, bring the n plus one down, subtract one, leaves you with n, cancel the n plus ones. So we just get x minus four to the n over three to the n. And that's all we had to do in this part. I feel like that was a makeup for the previous part, which was just so much work. Um, all right, let's look at the next thing. 
The Taylor series for F prime described in part B is a geometric series. Um, so we need that Taylor series. So let me just like copy paste. Um, for all X in the interval of convergence, the series for F prime, uh, for all X in the interval of convergence of the Taylor series for F prime, comma, show, okay, show that F prime is X minus four over seven minus X. They're asking us to just find the sum of a geometric series. Uh, so I'm gonna say F prime of X, cause that's what we're writing the series for, the, the function for um, is, so it's the first term, so X minus four over three, and then divided by one minus the ratio. So you have to look at it and say like, what am I multiplying each term by to get the new term? You go from, to get to the, from the first term to the second term, you have to multiply by X minus four over three. To get from the second to the third, you'd have to multiply again by X minus four over three. So the common ratio is X minus four over three. So we have this, and now this is just like an algebra one, well, maybe an algebra two, but this is an algebra problem. So complex fractions, we're just gonna clean this up. X minus four over three over three minus the quantity X minus four, all over three. Since they're both over three, we can just like cancel the threes ultimately, but right now we have X minus four over three over um, seven minus X all over three. So cancel those threes, X minus four over seven minus X, which is what they asked us to show. So I'm just putting a check mark because I think we did it. Um, let's take a look at the next part. So it is known that the radius of convergence of the Taylor series for F about X equals four is the same as the radius of convergence of the Taylor series for F prime about X equals four. I think it was on last year's FRQs that I like totally forgot that fact and I did the ratio test on like two consecutive parts of the same question, which I knew was like probably not what they wanted me to do, but it still worked. And so I would encourage you, if you know that it's going to work, just like do the thing you know how to do. But they're telling us that fact this time, thankfully. Does the Taylor series for F prime described in part B converge to F prime X minus four over seven minus X at X equals eight? Um, okay. So uh, if you think back to part B, the center, I mean, you can actually see it. Um, the center is four. And then we found that the radius was three, right? Because we got the absolute value of X minus four over three is less than one. So the absolute value of X minus four is less than three. So the radius is three. So we actually know that the interval of convergence for this is uh, four minus three is one and four plus three is seven. Um, so that's our interval of convergence. This is actually a geometric series. So we know that it doesn't, um, converge at the endpoints, it will always diverge at the endpoints. I don't think we really need that here because X equals eight just straight up is not in the interval of convergence. So the series does not converge to F prime of eight, which is, I'm pretty sure the question that they're asking here. So I'm just going to write that uh, X equals eight, not in the interval of convergence. Therefore the series at X equals eight does not converge to F prime of eight. I think that that's what they're asking. I gave a reason for my answer. I think that's good enough. All right, that's the whole thing. I hope this was helpful and good luck.